Section 1.5, definite integrals. The definite integral as defined in elementary calculus is something like this. The f, the integral from a to b of fx dx equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of, uh, of f multiplied by small chunks of, uh, this, of the divisions. In other words, we divide the real line into a bunch of chunks. And then we multiply the value f to each chunk. So we multiply the little strip of, of space and then add it all up. And we take a limit as the number of chunks increase and the biggest chunk has to go to zero. So it can't just stay big. Everything has to get smaller and smaller. So then the whole thing together will be defined as the definite integral. Now remember that although the definite integral was taught as the area under the curve, that isn't the definition. The definition of the definite integral is this particular limit, provided that it exists. So again, to remember, you just take the value of the interval, and then you pick some point in here as xi. It doesn't really matter which. And then multiply it together and add the whole sum up and take the limit. And if it exists, then you have your definite integral. To demonstrate this principle, we're going to do something that hasn't been done in elementary calculus. To just to show how this actually works if you were to, to, to use it literally. Consider, for example, we'll do this problem. Okay, The integral of uh, x squared from 0 to, say, b. Now, the integral of x squared is very simple to do if you remember how to do it do in basic integration. However, we're not going to do it that way. Instead, we'll do it this uh, fundamental way, the hard way. And we'll, we'll actually calculate the sum of this thing and make it come out, which will be quite involved. And in order to do this, we have to uh, use a certain hint. Here's the hint, which says that um, 1 squared plus 2 squared all the way plus all the way go up to n squared equal to this particular equa neat equation. Now, we're not going to prove this particular hint right now because the hint will be fairly, it'll take more than a few lines to prove. Not much more, but it takes a few. So we will just accept this for now because our goal is to just demonstrate how this works. Okay, now given the hint, let's do this the hard way. Okay, going back to the original formula, we will divide the, the real line from, uh, we're doing it from zero to B. So we start at zero and we end at B and we divide it into n even segments. The definition doesn't require that you divide it into even segments, but in practice, we might as well. So the first point is b over n, the second point is 2b over n, and so on. And of course, the interval is, called, is the width of the interval is also b over n. So it keeps going until the very end, which is called nb over n. All right. So then you have that. So what is the summation? So the summation of uh, fxi delta xi is equal to the, we'll add up this, we'll spread out the summation, just add up the terms one at a time. So f, that is f of, uh, we'll take the end point, is f of uh, bn, bn plus f of 2bn, OK? All the stuff, all the way up, the up to f of n b n to the end point. This whole thing, each each one will multiply by delta x i, which is the same in for our choice is b over n. Okay, this is how we are gonna do this this specific summation. We'll pick the end point, and each one will multiply by the 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 interval, which is we choose it to be the same. So add it all up. And what is that? Being that f is just x squared, it becomes b over n squared plus 2b over n squared, and so on, all the way up to nb over n squared, the whole thing times b over n. So that's our summation. Now, the next thing we do is, uh, at this point, we don't even know if this is going to converge. Okay, We need the limit to converge. 
before anything happens. So we're hoping that you'll converge. Now let's see. We will well we'll take out the common factor, which is b over n squared. And what we have left in there then is one squared plus two squared plus all the way up n squared times b over n. Okay, now we see where this comes in very handy. And so we'll plug that in. So together is b cubed over n cubed times this stuff, which is uh, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. Okay, and then <clears throat> which is equal to, um, you can calculate this, we'll put the numbers over here, these are the constants, and then over here we cancel out 1n, so it becomes n squared, and on the top it becomes 2n squared plus um, whatever, okay? a1n plus a2. We don't care what it is, because this is the only thing we care about as we take the limit. So as n goes to infinity, then we have the whole thing will become b3 over 6 times, well, <clears throat> the, the bottom will We'll cancel out this, so you multiply by 2, and these, the, bottom, the n squared will dominate the power n and dominate the constant, so these will all vanish. So the only thing we have left is 2. So the answer then is b cubed over 3. And that, of course, is what you would have figured out if you did it the easy way. But we use it in a hard way to demonstrate how this formula can look like in real life. Of course, we don't normally do this. Uh, normally, we will do things the easy way and figure out how to crank this out. But it, but you got to remember, a lot of times this thing does not integrate very easily. I mean, there's no ready formula to come up with what the integration of this thing is. So when that happens, then we will just define the function as this and calculate the limit uh, as we see it. And that will also work.